Hey there, this is Richie with the uh, Fan of Football 813 YouTube channel. I'm right here with your week seven. It's already week seven college football previews. This is for the Saturday games. Uh, Angela and I, we picked the weekday games ourselves we, to make made it a little different. We picked them and I broke those down as well. So check that video out. There's actually a Tuesday game. This is the time of year. There's going to be Tuesday, Wednesday games. Uh, but this one, this video, I'm just going to do Saturday. I have my picks here. I have everything broken down. I've been working for the last like three hours breaking, writing all these stats down for you people. So let's just jump right into it. The first game of the day, the Minnesota Golden Gophers take on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Uh, Minnesota, they're top 40 in scoring pass defense. Um, they're top 20 in total defense. They have a wide receiver, Tyler Johnson, who is... Um, He's actually tied for fourth in the nation with six touchdown receptions, but this is going to be all Ohio State. Dwayne Haskins, he leads the nation with 25 touchdown passes. Um, they're one of the best offenses in, in the country. Wide receiver Paris Campbell, he's third nationally with seven touchdown receptions. Terry McLaurin is fourth nationally with six touchdown receptions. Uh, I don't see this being very... Um, Minnesota could keep it close a little bit, maybe, um, especially early, but I think Ohio State. Dwayne Haskins is up for that Heisman, I'm telling you now. All right, the next game, the Florida Gators take on the Vanderbilt Commodores. The, the Gators are coming off of a really nice win against LSU, a huge win against LSU. Um, let's start with Vanderbilt first. They're, they're okay. Kyle Shermer is a decent quarterback. Kalijah Limscoe, he's actually sixth in the nation in receptions with 45 and fourth in touchdown receptions. Um, they have Ke uh, Keyshawn Vaughn at running back who's who's been playing pretty well um Vanderbilt is always a tough team it, and they're and they're actually uh they're three and three so they're not a bad team but even when they were uh pretty bad they always played especially Florida tough even back in the 90s in 96 when we won the national championship they only beat them, the only Gators only beat them 28 21 like they they are always a tough out it's a noon game it's kind of an early year game for for the Gators um but I, I think they come out with this win. Felipe Frank, I didn't realize this. He's tied for 10th in the nation with 13 touchdown passes. Um, the Gators' defense, they forced, they forced 17 turnovers so far this year, uh, which makes them second in the country. And they forced 11. They've had 11 FOMO recoveries, which is the NCAA leader right now. So I think their defense, it's really, really strong. I think they come out with the win. All right, the next game, the Tennessee Volunteers and Auburn Tigers. Tennessee still sucks. Um, Auburn's coming off a loss. Though. They lost to Mississippi State. They were upset. Auburn, Auburn's kind of mediocre, but you know I think they win. Jared Siddham's is still a, de a good enough quarterback. He might not fit that system as well as they thought, but uh, I, I think I, I think Auburn shouldn't have a problem. I think they bounce back with this. Um, all right, Rutgers and Maryland. I'm just trying to see if I even Maryland is. 21st in the nation in rushing offense. There's not a lot to say. Rutgers sucks. Maryland should win. Um, they they got a good quarterback uh, in Hill. Team Hill. Ty Johnson's a good running back. Kicker Turner or whatever he does. All that shit. Uh, that you know. I'm just uh, Maryland. That's who I said wins. All right, next one. Iowa, Indiana. This is this will be a good game. Indiana actually is they're four and two. They played Ohio State really tough. They have a good quarterback in Peyton Ramsey. Uh, their running back Stevie Scott's over five five hundred twenty eight rushing yards. Um, Iowa's defense though, they're thirteenth in the nation in scoring defense, fifth in rush defense, thirtieth in pass defense, and fourth in total defense. Their quarterback Nate Stanley threw four touchdowns last week. Uh, I think uh, this will be a really really interesting game. Uh, a piece of me kind of, I, I, I enjoy Iowa, a uh, piece of me kind of wants Indiana to win because they're only two away from bowl eligibility. They don't make it to bowls very often. Um, but I, that being said, I'm, at, I'm actually going with Iowa with that one. So but that'll be a pretty pretty good game, kind of smash mouth versus uh, Indiana's. Their offense has been pretty decent the last few years. All right, the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Take on the Northwestern Wildcats. And Nebraska is 0-5, but they've been in all their games. And I'm actually picking 
picking them. Northwestern has been up and down. Three weeks ago, they had a 21-3 lead on Akron. They lost. Akron came back and won. They had a 17-3 uh, lead against Michigan. Michigan came back and won. This past weekend against Michigan State, they had a 14-3 lead. Michigan State went, came all the way back to lead 19-14. Now, Northwestern basically came from ahead to win 29-19, but they they have a good quarterback in Clayton Thorson. Um, I think them losing their running back, Jeremy Larkin, who retired because of his final injury, I think that's hurt them. They haven't had a whole lot of a run game, really. They, their wide receiver, uh, Flynn Nagel, he's tied for 14th and that's with 36 receptions. But I'm, I'm actually going to go with Nebraska. A.J. Martinez is a really good quarterback. Um, he's a true freshman. He uh, Last weekend, even though he lost, he had like 384 passing yards and he can run it all over the place. He fits that offense really well, and I think Nebraska is going to win their first game of the year uh, with this one. Uh, next game, Oklahoma State and Kansas State. Oklahoma State, they were upset last week by Iowa State. Kansas State, they, almost, they lost to Baylor on a last-second field goal. Kansas State, I mean, they've been kind of struggling this year. But, I mean, they have a running back, Alex Barnes, who ran for 250 yards this year. They always find a way to win games that um, they shouldn't win. Um, Alex Barnes is 15th nationally. That being said, I'm going to go with Oklahoma State to, to pull it out. I think they, they get off that schneid of the losing. They have quarterback Taylor Cornelius. He's sixth in the nation in passing yards, tied for seventh with 16 touchdown passes. Justice Hill, one of the best running backs in the country. I keep saying it. He's a definite Doak Walker Award candidate. Uh, he's 10th nationally in rushing. He's got seven rushing touchdowns. Wide receiver Tylen Wallace is 6th in receiving yards, tied for 15th uh, with 35. And Oklahoma State, they actually get after the quarterback. They lead the nation as the team with 28 sacks. And Jordan Brailford actually leads the nation with 8 sacks alone. So they... They have a, a potentially explosive offense. I mean, they lost last week, but they scored 42, and I think they bounced back with this one. Akron and Buffalo. Buffalo is one of the surprise teams. They, they're five and one. They're almost a ball of ability. Tyree Jackson's a really good um, uh, quarterback. Anthony Johnson is one of the best receivers, but he's been hurt lately. But KJ Os Osborne, out of nowhere, he he's a force. He's tied for fourth nationally with six. Uh, touchdown receptions. He's kind of taken over for Anthony Johnson in the last few games and done really well. Tyree Jackson is sixth in the nation in touchdown passes with 17 touchdown passes. Even running back Kevin Marks, he's tied for sixth nationally with seven uh, rushing touchdowns and he had over 100 yards, like 160 yards last week. Um, I, I don't see this. I, Akron could keep it close. They do have the nation's leading interceptor. Alvin Davis, he's got four deceptions, which leads the country. He's actually tied with two others, but he's he's doing really, really well. And he actually brought, if I remember right, he brought them both, both back for touchdowns against Northwestern. But I think Buffalo wins this. All right, Toledo, Eastern Michigan. Toledo, they have one of the best offenses in the country. They're 10th in scoring offense. Eastern Michigan, they always, I broke this down the other day about them. Like, last year they lost six games by seven points or left less with three of them in overtime and they've lost their last four by seven points or less and I think two have been uh, in overtime so they just I don't know but Toledo I, I think Toledo has a really good offense um, even though their quarterback Mitchell Guadani was hurt Eli Peters came in last weekend through four touchdowns they have the one of the best wide receiving cores in the country John Bay Johnson Deontay Johnson and uh, Cody Thompson um, so I think Toledo gets that. All right, Duke uh, taking on Georgia Tech. Duke, they have Daniel Jones back at quarterback. Um, they they have a potential potent offense, um, but Georgia Tech they're actually leading the nation. They're the number one rushing offense in the country with 373 rushing yards per game. Um, their their quarterback Taquan Marshall is fourth nationally with nine rushing touchdowns. And weirdly enough, their backup quarterback, Tobias Oliver, he's sixth nationally with seven touchdowns. So basically, they put whatever, whoever the hell they want in at quarterback, and they just run for touchdowns. It's kind of their their thing. So I'm actually I'm going with uh, Georgia Tech to win that one. I'm not even looking at my sheet. I'm just like remembering this shit. But 
All right, Louisville taking on Boston College. Boston College, A.J. Dillon, he's one of the best running backs in the country. He's still injured. We're not, not sure if they're going to be back. Uh, ben Glines, he stepped in pretty nicely. He had like 90 yards rushing last week, 120 rushing yards uh, the week before. Louisville, they don't really have a lot going f for them. Um, it, he's... The, I don't know, their offense, they don't always beat Florida State a couple weeks ago, but then they gave up 66 to Georgia Tech, which I just said they have a really good rushing offense, but it just, I don't know. I, I can't see them beating Boston College. Quarterback Anthony Brown for Boston College, he's actually tied for Ted Nasley with uh, 13 rushing touchdowns. And if you hear water, I just took a shower and the water's draining and stuff. Um, so I, I think uh, Boston College comes out with that one. Um, all right, UAB. Who did it? Yeah, UAB. They're they beat Louisiana Tech. Uh, Louisiana is one of the better de uh, the past few years. They've been one of the best teams in this USA. UAB when they won eight games last year, they're four and one. They killed Louisiana Tech. They're facing Rice. Rice has been really really bad this year. Yeah, um, UAB. They have uh, uh, AJ Early. He's a really a good dual threat man, game manager type at quarterback. Spencer Brown, he's one of the best running backs that you guys don't know about. He ran for like 1,300 yards last season. He's off to a really good start this year, even though it's like halfway through the season. But uh, but I'm going with UAB for that one. So the Troy Trojans taking on the Liberty Flame. This is a scary one. Troy is the best, maybe one of the best teams in the Sun Belt. They're 5-1. Liberty, they're two and three. They they're moving on to one double A this year, but they have one of the best quarterbacks really in the country. Um, though nobody really knows about it. Stephen Calvert. He's eleventh in passing yards. He's tied for eleventh with touchdown passes at twelve. Um, Troy actually, they're running at BJ Smith. He's tied for fifth national with eight t rushing touchdowns. This could be a scary game. Liberty could come out with it'd be a, a minor upset, you know, a Sun Belt upset, but. They, Troy better better be careful. I'm gonna go with Troy though, with this. But this this is a really interesting game, I think. All right, Southern Mississippi and North Texas. I I I really want to watch this. This should be a shootout of shootouts. Southern Miss they're a top ten. Uh, they're 14th in passing offense. Wide receiver Kez Walk Quez Watkins is tied for fourth nationally with six touchdown receptions. Deck. Uh, Jack Abraham, he passes all over the place. I think he, uh, I don't think he's hurt actually. Like, so he should be putting up some points. North Texas, they're five and one. They're one of the top um, teams in the in the country in passing. Um, their quarterback Mason Vaughn, he's actually number four in passing yards. Is tied for eighth with 15 touchdown passes. A wide receiver Rico Busted Jr. He's tied for tenth with 41 receptions. He's 18th in receiving yards and he's tied for second nationally with eight touchdown receptions. So this is a back and forth game. I I'm, I want to watch this. Like both teams should get to, I mean the 40s at least the 30s, but definitely the 40s. Um, I, I'm giving the edge. I actually picked Southern Miss in this. I probably shouldn't have, but because North North Texas, I was looking him up. They actually lead the nation with 12 interceptions, and uh, one of their players, Nate Brooks, he's tied for the league lead with four interceptions. So they might be picking off some passes. I, you know, I went with Southern Miss, I, probably because I was like, oh, it's, it'd be, I wouldn't really be an upset. This is really a coin flip, but that that'll be a really interesting game to watch there. All right, the Pittsburgh Panthers take on the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Pitt's coming off a really nice overtime win against Syracuse. Notre Dame's, they actually look good this year. Ian Book's a really good quarterback. Dexter Williams had a 97-yard touchdown run last week against Virginia Tech. Yes, 97. He basically he went the length of the field. Um, their offense has been really good. Their defense has been good. Uh, I can't see Pitt winning this, but Pitt's been up and down and weird all year. They do have Ray McCaudry Allison, who's 18th nationally in rushing yards. Um, but I, I went I went with Notre Dame with this, but I, I think they're on a bit of an upset alert. I, I'm, I can call that, but I, I think Notre Dame comes out with this. All right, Kent State and Miami of Ohio. I was trying to look up some stuff for this, and there's not a lot. Miami of Ohio is a good quarterback, and Gus Raglan, Kent State, Woody Barrett, he's a good dual threat guy. But 
I, I think uh, Miami High, they, they should have won a couple games already this year. I think they'll end up winning this, that one. Yeah, just making sure I pick them. So, it's kind of, I mean, a game I would probably don't really need to watch. I mean, I'll watch it, but there's, there's not a whole lot going on there. Uh, all right, Western Michigan Bowling Green. There, there could be something going on there. Bowling Green's 1-5, but they're one of the top um, offenses in the country. Their quarterback, Jared Dagey, he's tied for eighth nationally with uh, 15 touchdown passes. Western Michigan, they look like a really, really good team. Maybe one of the best teams in the MAC. John Watson, good quarterback. He's 10th in passing yards nationally. He's 9th in touchdown passes with 14. Wide receiver Jaden Reed is tied for 4th nationally with 6 touchdown receptions. This could go back and forth. This should be kind of fun to watch. They also have Levante Bellamy at running back, running for 531 yards so far. They have Jamari Bogan. They have a, yeah. It's like, I mean, these two teams, even Bowling Green, Andrew Clare had over 100 yards rushing, and they got a really good receiver in Scott Miller. Um, this could vary. Western Michigan could lose this one. I picked Western Michigan to win. I, I think they, they'll have a little bit too much because Bowling Green can't really stop anybody. It's kind of been their problem. They've been able to put up points and, and move the ball at least, but they can't stop the, the other team. So Western Michigan, Michigan will go with that. Uh, ball State and Central Michigan. Central Michigan looks really bad. I thought they'd be a pretty good team, but they've been terrible. They can't get their quarterback situation figured out. Ball State, actually, they have uh, Riley Neal at uh, quarterback, and he's, he's, he's 20th in the nation in passing yards. Uh, they have a wide receiver, Riley Miller, so Riley to Riley, the Riley connection. He's tied for 15th nationally with uh, 35 receptions. They have James Gilbert and Caleb Huntley at running backs, 2,000 yard rushers. I, I don't see this being really close. Ball State's only 2-4, and four, but I, 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 I can't see... Central Michigan has been terrible. I, I don't want to be me, but fuck them. All right, Georgia Bulldogs and LSU Tigers, one of the games of the day. Georgia, Jake Fromm at quarterback, 20th nationally in passing. Uh, LSU, Nick Brosette, he's 21st nationally in rushing. Uh, Joe Burrow finally threw two, his first two interceptions of the year last week against Florida. LSU did lose to Florida, but I'm actually going with the, the mini upset. I'm not sold on Georgia, man. Georgia should have lost to... Uh, was it Missouri a couple weeks ago, and they just kind of look sloppy. Um, I mean, they're they're winning sloppily, but they've been playing kind of not very good teams. And I think LSU is a, is actually a good team, so I'm going with LSU. That that'll be one of the games of the day. That'll be that'll be fun, fun to see. Um, all right, Washington Huskies and Oregon Ducks. I I want I I enjoy I love watching Oregon play. Justin Herbert, quarterback, one of the best in the country. Their offense is always fun. Even Washington, their offense, Jake Browning is a great quarterback. Miles Gaskin, he just he just got his 50th uh, touchdown, rushing touchdown. Uh, last week, Aaron Fuller at wide receiver. This game, should, I mean, Washington has a really good defense. Oregon, they normally have decent defenses. They, they usually can force a lot of turnovers because they know their offense will just score right away. Um, I went with Oregon in this. This is this will be one of the ga games of the year, maybe. Um, this will be fun, fun to watch. It, I I, I want to say it'll be a shootout, but like both defenses, Washington especially, their defense can do well. But Oregon pretty much moved it up and down the field on Stanford, and people seem like Stanford. I don't. They're overrated. And they kind of have proven that. But uh, this this will be great, great game to watch. I definitely. We recommend watching that, but I'm going to go with Oregon to win. Michigan State takes on Penn State. Michigan State's been sloppy. They're not very good. Penn State's a really good team. Trace McSorley, Heisman, candidate at quarterback. Uh, Miles Sanders, one of the best running backs in the Big Ten, if not the nation. Michigan State has a good quarterback, too. Brian Lewerke, Felton Davis at third at receiver. They've just been so... Up and down, I went with uh, Penn State to win this. I will say this, Michigan State does have the number one rushing defense in the country. So maybe they can... It'll be harder, though, because Miles Sanders is good. Uh, Trace McSorley just came off 175 yards rushing against Ohio State. I mean, it could be an upset, but I don't really see it. I think Penn State wins wins this game. All right, Baylor Bears taking on the Texas Longhorns. Um 
Baylor, they're coming off a nice last-second victory against Kansas State, 37-34. Charlie, Charlie Blue, a quarterback, he's 16th nationally in passing yards. Wide receiver Jalen Hurd, he was actually a running back a couple years ago at Tennessee, University of Tennessee, Tennessee Volunteers. He transferred, and he trans transitioned to a wide receiver, um, and he's he's tied for ninth nationally with 42 receptions, and he's 13th nationally in receiving yards, so he's made that transition really smooth. Texas, they're coming off the huge win against Oklahoma. Um, wide receiver Lil Jordan Humphrey is tied for 15th nationally with 35 receptions. He's 16th in yards. Sam Ellinger is a really, really good quarterback to a threat guy. But I'm actually going with the upset here. I think Baylor wins. I think Texas, they're they're way better than they were last year. No question about that. But I, I still don't, they're still not, like, they're not unbeatable. And Baylor has looked re much better this year. And I think that I'm going with the upset. I think Baylor actually goes, they're going into Austin. They're going into, te into Texas. And I think they come out with the win. All right, one of the games of the day. I'm definitely looking forward to it. I know a lot of people get sick of UCF, but this game you guys will want to watch, if nothing else, to see points upon points upon points. Let's just break this down right here. UCF, their top 10 in scoring, rush, total, total offense, 20th in passing offense, and basically so is Memphis. They're the top 11 and top 10 in like everything scoring. Mackenzie Milton for UCF, he's 20. Um, the quarterback, he's 20th in passing yards. He's tied for 8th in passing touchdowns with 15. Uh, Memphis, he leads the uh, running back, Daryl Henderson. He leads the nation. The number one rusher in the country. 934 rushing yards already. That's crazy. That's six games in. He's already got basically 1,000 yards. He's definitely going for 2,000. If he doesn't get hurt, I'll be shocked if he does not hit 2,000 yards by the end of the season, including... Because um, they'll have a bowl game, they'll, there's a very good chance they'll play in the US, uh, American USA in the American Athletic Conference Championship game. Um, quarterback for Memphis, people don't know about Brady White. He transferred in. He's a he was a grad transfer. He's 18th nationally in passing yards. He's also tied for eighth. He's got 15 touchdown passes himself. UCF, they're they have they're on an 18 game winning streak and they've scored 30 or more points in 18 games. They need it. I'm gonna say at least 50 <laughs> to beat Memphis in this one, and and that might not be enough because these two teams played last year in the conference championship game and UCF won in overtime 62 to 55. So they needed to drop 60 just to beat this this Memphis team. Now, granted, this Memphis team is not quite as good as last year. They, uh, but they're still pretty damn strong. And UCF, they... I, I'm nervous about this game. I'm a, I'm a Florida fan in general. I like UCF. Uh, I know my brother went to UCF. I know he's he's probably nervous about this. And it, it, what it comes down to is stopping Daryl Henderson. And you're not going to stop him. But if you slow him down, if... if Instead of 200 rushing yards, he gets 100. Um, UCF is really good at, at forcing toner, turnovers. They're definitely going to have to do that. Because the first game last year, they played them twice last year. They beat them the first time 40 to 13, but they forced like five turnovers or six turnovers, something like that. Um, this, this, man, it's in Memphis. I went with UCF, but, dude, if you want to see offense, if you guys want to see... I mean, both teams probably might, should probably put up at least 600 yards each. I mean, that's, and I'm not even exaggerating that. But that, that'll be great to watch anyway. All right, Texas A&M taking on South Carolina. South Carolina's coming off a really nice win against Missouri. They beat them in a wet, wet, it was raining, pouring, and yet it was still high scoring. They won 37-35 to 35 over Missouri on a last second field goal. And that was with their backup. Jake Bentley was hurt. I'm not sure if he'll be back for this game, but Michael Skarnecchia came in and threw three touchdown passes. Uh, they, they're playing Texas A&M. Texas A&M is coming off an upset, quote-unquote, against Kentucky. I don't think Kentucky... I mean, yeah, they were undefeated, but I think they lose, like, two or three more games. I, don't, I called Texas A&M and win. They, beat them. they did beat them in overtime, but um, I just think... 
Uh, I don't know what to think. I don't even know what I picked here. Probably Texas A&M, yeah. I, I, Texas A&M, they have uh, Travion Williams. He's one of the best running backs in the country. He's fifth nationally uh, in rushing yards. He's sixth nationally with seven rushing touchdowns. I think I mean, Texas, this will be a pretty close game, I, though. I, I think it'll be pretty good. But um, A&M will come out with that. Ohio against Northern Illinois. Like, both these, these two MAC teams, this could be a preview of the MAC championship game. Um, Ohio is actually top 30, excuse me, top 30 nationally in scoring offense. Northern Illinois is top 40 nationally in scoring defense. Both teams are very similar. Ohio's got Nathan Rourke at uh, quarterback, but he runs all over the place. And Marcus Childers for Northern Illinois, he's the same kind of guy. They both have uh, mobile quarterbacks. They both have really good running there's no like standout running back for either team, but their their committee is really really good. Um, I I went with uh, Ohio, but this was coin flip for me. Uh, Northern Illinois has, I mean they're three and three. They haven't looked as strong as they have in the past. Um, and Ohio, Ohio's only three and two, but they've actually looked just because I've I've been watching them both play, and Ohio just looks better. If that makes any sense, but. This this that'll be a really good game. It'll be close. It could be kind of high scoring. I'd say in the thirties maybe, um, like thirty one twenty eight, thirty five thirty. You know, some thirty three thirty, um, whatever, something like that. Uh, but I went with Ohio. All right, Temple taking on Navy. Temple Navy. This this will be a pretty good game. Both teams like to run the ball. Um, Navy, they're the number two rushing offense in the country. Quarterback slash running back Malcolm Perry, he's 19th in rushing. Oddly enough, their backup quarterback, Zach Aby, he's actually tied for six nationally with seven rushing touchdowns. He he comes in down at the goal line, like, Malcolm Perry gets him all the way down there, and then they're like, all right, guy, go in there, get a touchdown. It's kind of kind of shit, but whatever. Uh, Temple, running back Raquel Armstead, he's 13th nationally in rushing. Um, one thing I highlighted is... Uh, Temple is 74th nationally in rushing defense, and Navy has a triple option offense. Like I said, they're number two rushing. I think I picked, I might have picked Navy, or I might have picked Temple, I don't remember. Uh, yeah, I picked Temple. After I actually dove deep into this, I kind of want to change it, but honestly, it, it really could go back either way. And you know what? This weird quirk of a thing Temple has going on. They've gone six straight games where they've scored at least one non-offensive touchdown, which means they've either uh, brought a fumble back for a touchdown, brought an interception back for a touchdown, blocked a punt for that they recovered for a touchdown. Last week, they returned a punt for a touchdown. They're just finding ways to score on, without their offense, and that's the difference in a game, especially a game like this that could be really close and really kind of low scoring. It, it comes down to the defense and the not only forcing turnovers, but scoring off the turnovers. And that could be it. So Temple, Temple, I think, edges them, edges them out there. All right, Western, Western Kentucky and Charlotte. The, uh, these teams are, I mean, Western Kentucky, I could say they're top 40 in passing. They've kind of been lackluster this year. They're only one in four. Charlotte's two and three. They have a decent, uh, decent running Morning Mac and Benny LMA. Quarterback Chris Reynolds, he's a freshman, but he still looks really good. I think I actually went with Charlotte to win, which I th might be the first time I've actually picked Charlotte. They've, they're like a five-year-old program, and they've only had a football team for, what, five or six seasons now? Um, this, this, uh, I, I'm, I'm interested in watching this, if only because I want to see how Charlotte grows, you know? But like I said, they've only been around a few years. And see how they do. I kind of know Western Kentucky a little bit. Um, they they usually have pretty good passing offenses. They they it's, this year they're kind of struggling, but they'll fix it. But yeah, I'm interested to see where Charlotte goes. So I picked them to win. Uh, the next game, Marshall Thunder here taking on the Old Dominion Monarchs. Marshall they have a pretty decent passing offense. Their quarterback is a Green. He was hurt last week. I think he he might be back. I'd have to check. But even then, their backup, they lost last week, but the backup came in and played pretty well himself. Uh, Tyler King at running back went off for 165 rushing yards, so they have a pretty good running game there. Old Dominion, they're actually their 20th in passing offense. 
And they have one of the best wide receivers in the country, Jonathan Duhart. He's tied ninth nationally with 42 catches. He's fourth nationally in receiving yards. And he's uh, in fourth with receiving touchdowns, too, at six. So he's got 42 catches for 706 yards and six touchdowns already this year. He's having a monster season. I mean, he's on pace to have well over 14, maybe 1,500 yards receiving. And that's, that, that'll be one of the tops in the nation. That, uh, that'll be... That would be great. This this game should be kind of high scoring, but I went with Marshall uh, to win in the end. All right, Army uh, taking on the San Jose State Spartans. Army, they're number three nationally in rushing offense. Um, San Jose State, they're actually 26 in passing offense. They've been putting up some points the last few weeks. They had 30 last week. They had 41 the week before. Uh, this could be uh, really, really interesting. Oddly enough, I wrote this down just because I think it's cool and, and I like these little stats. San Jose State, they have a defensive back named Dakari Monroe. He has 12 pass defenses so far this year, which a pass defense is an interception or interceptions combined with pass breakups. And you combine those stats to make a pass defense stat, right? So he's actually leading the nation with 12. Unfortunately, they're playing against a team that doesn't pass the ball. <laughs> They, uh, Army, they run their triple option. They, they're, I think, last or one of the last in the country in passing offense. They just don't put it up. So this guy, he's a really good pass defender, but he won't have many, many chances. Uh, so I, I went with Army to win that. Purdue Boilermakers taking kind on of Illinois fighting Illini. This is kind of interesting to me. But both are like kind of middling Big Ten teams. They want to make bowl games. Purdue's 2-3, and three, Illinois is 3-2. Um, Purdue, they're actually 13th nationally in uh, passing offense. They have one of the best wide receivers in the country, Rondell Moore. He's tied 10th nationally with 41 receptions. Um, Illinois, they, they, they've been put it on, I mean, they got, they're 13th nationally in rushing offense. They got Corbin Epstein and Bush. It's like a law firm or something. Their quarterback, A.J. Bush, he was a transfer from Virginia Tech. He's a really good dual threat guy. Reggie Corbin, Mike Epstein at running back. They're kind of running all over them. I picked uh, Purdue with that. I, I'm kind of regretting that. I think Illinois. I, I went back and forth with it in my head. David Blau for Purdue. He's their quarterback. <clears throat> he's he's a really good passing quarterback. Um, but I think uh, this is kind of a toss-up, but I, I, I got Purdue uh, with this one. All right, New Mexico and Colorado State. New Mexico's coming out, out of nowhere this year. They're a force. They're going, they're 3-2, and two, but they're 17th nationally in scoring offense, and they're top 40 in rushing and total offense. Uh, they're, they just kind of do whatever. They have that Arizona former uh, Rich Rodriguez kind of offense. Um, they can pass it, they can run it, they can do whatever they want with it, really. Lexing, Lexington Thomas, he's one of the top running backs in the uh, group of five, at the very least Mountain West. Colorado State, they have a really good offense too. They they're really they're two and four this year. They've struggled, but they're number twenty two in passing offense. Quarterback KJ Carter Samuels, he's twelfth in passing yards. He's eighth in uh, with fifteen touchdown passes. Wide receiver Preston Williams. Colorado State just churns out these these wide receivers. Michael Gallup last year, Rashard Higgins a few years before. Uh, there was another one sometime before that I can't remember. But Preston Williams. 8th nationally, 43 catches, 10th in yards, and tied for 4th with 6 touchdown receptions. This game should be, could be pretty high scoring. I actually think I'd pick New Mexico with, to win that one. Uh, just because they, they've looked stronger, just so, kind of overall as a team. Uh, that, should, that should be pretty fun, fun, uh, fun to watch. Next team, UNLV taking on Utah State. Um, shit, I, I said the wrong thing. <laughs> Lexington Thomas plays for UNLV, my bad. I fucked that up. But New Mexico does have a pretty good running back in Tyrone Owens as well. Uh, but UNLV has Lexington Thomas. He's one of the best running backs in the group of five. But they're taking on, and they're number six rushing in, in offense, rushing offense. But Utah State, they're number three in scoring offense. Uh, Jordan Love, he, he's kind of been passing it all over the place. Um, this will, It'll be a pretty good game, but I went with Utah State to win that. All right, South Alabama taking on 1-W Alabama State. South Alabama is not very good, but they should be able to win this one against Alabama State. I'm just going to shout out uh, 
Wide receiver Demarius Way, he's 14th nationally in, in receptions with 36. So so at least they got, and I know they have some other pretty good players, excuse me, there as well. But they should they should win that. All right, New Mexico State taking on Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns. New Mexico State's coming off a nice win against uh, Liberty. They put up 49 points in that one. Louisiana Lafayette, they are coming off a really good win, too. They're 23rd in the nation in rushing offense. They're running back Trey Ragus. He's got 505 rushing yards. They have a pretty decent dual-threat quarterback in Andre Nunez. Um, New Mexico State could keep this pretty close. This this actually should go either way. No, neither team is really dominant. Uh, I went with... Uh, what did I go with? Louisiana, yeah. I went with Louisiana to win, though. But it should be pretty pretty good. Louisiana Monroe and Coastal Carolina, man. Louisiana Monroe, uh, they have a good dual threat quarterback in Caleb Evans. They could should keep this game. This will be in, an interesting game. But uh, it's at Coastal Carolina on their Aqua Field or their Teal Field. Um, they they're they're pretty, they're pretty strong. They're three and two. This is only a second year in one one uh, A. But their coach Joe Mowgli, he's a really really good coach. Um, their quarterback killed Anderson. He was hurt, but Bryce Carpenter, he he's he's a pretty good, uh, you know, he's done pretty well so far as a freshman. Marcus Outlow, he's a Boston College transfer. He's got uh, a bunch of yards rushing, 429 rushing yards. Colts and Kellen had their 43rd in scoring offense, and they're actually 17th in the nation in rushing offense. So actually, I went with Colts Carolina with that. I think I think Colts Carolina could make a bowl this year. You know, and that'll be pretty damn cool. It's on their second year one A. They very, they have a really really good shot at, at doing. They have a good enough team. All right, Missouri taking on Alabama Crimson Tide. Upset alert? Nah. I mean, I I wanted to call it, but Bama's look way too damn good. Missouri's kind of struggling. Drew Locke's a really good quarterback for Missouri. They're top thirty in scoring scoring pass total offense. But Bama's got two attack at Wailoa. Like, he's a Heisman candidate. He's tied for fifth nationally with passing touchdowns, 18th. He's first nationally in completion percentage. He's tied for first nationally in completion percentage, 75.2%. He's completing three-fourths of his passes. And not only that, he leads the nation with 14.8 yards per attempt. That means... That's basically 15 yards per attempt. Think about it. If three fourths of your completions are going, and each of them are going 15 yards, that's 45. That's almost half the field just in three plays, right? That's unbelievable. They're number one actually in scoring offense in the country in 56. They've scored 45 plus points in all six games uh, so far this year. They're tied uh, with the national lead at 36 pack, pass breakups and uh, in 46 past defense as a, as a team. Uh, I, I just, their wide receiver, Jerry Judy, 12th in receiving yards, tied for second national with a touchdown reception. Damian, uh, what is his name, Willis. What, they, I mean, they just got guys they throw out there that run and catch passes and just kind of do things. I mean, they have like, what, four defensive touchdowns this year as well. I, I don't know. It, this looks like one of the best teams maybe to ever play. And uh, not just at Alabama. I'm saying ever. Ever. Including USC. The USC, the Matt Ladder, including Vince Young's teams. I mean, they, they are so good. <sighs> All right, West Virginia taking on the team Iowa State. Now, West Virginia, they struggled last week against Kansas. They went 38-22, but Will Greer, like I predicted, he threw three interceptions. Kansas uh, led the nation or leads the nation with the interceptions. Or, or let or uh, at the time did um, Iowa State coming? They're coming up a really really n big win against Oklahoma State at, with a freshman quarterback. Brock Purdy came in the second possession through what three three or four touchdown passes and had one rushing and had like well over four hundred something yards of offense. Um, I that being said, I think quarterback Will Greer. He's the Heisman candidate. He's seventh nationally in passing yards. He's third. He's got 20, uh, 21 touchdown passes. This this could be a pretty interesting game. Dave, wide receiver David Sills, David Sills, the fifth. He's tied for fourth nationally with six touchdown receptions. And, oh, by the way, they have Marcus Sims and Gary Jennings. Uh, Jennings went over 1,000 yards last year. Marcus Sims just kind of puts up 100 yards every game this year. 
this could be pretty pretty good, but I think West Virginia comes out with the win. Uh, Miami Hurricanes taking on Virginia. Virginia has a really good quarterback in Bryce Perkins and Cozy Perry. He's coming off a great comeback from behind win against Florida State. He threw four touchdown passes. He's got to get his completion percentage up. But uh, they got running back Travis Homer, DJ Dallas, got everybody at wide receiver, whoever the hell they want to do. Lawrence Cager, wide receiver. I didn't even write them down. But uh, part of the reason why I think Miami should win this game, too, is their defense. They actually lead the nation with 72 tackles for loss which is by far number one. The number two team is like 57. So like 15, and that's not like an easy stat to just like, you know, it's not like the next week uh, the, that number two team could get 15 tackles for loss. Even if Miami got none and, and, the, and the other team got 10, which if you get 10 tackles for losses in game as a team, that's phenomenal. Um, I, they're, just, they're eating up people. That's why they're five and one. I think Miami goes to six and one. Uh, Houston Cougars taking on EC Pirates. Houston Cougars has one of the best quarterbacks in the country. You guys have no idea about Derek King's tied for fifth with t in touchdown passes with eighteen. He's actually tied for sixth in rushing touchdowns. With, he's got seven rushing touchdowns. He's got twenty five total touchdowns. Houston, they're fourth in scoring, eleventh in rushing, sixteenth in passing, and number two in total offense. They're actually tied for first with 36 pass breakups as their defense. So even teams trying to come back against them after they're putting up 50 points a game, they can't do it because they're knocking passes down. Um, now they're playing an East Carolina team. They, they're 44th national passing offense. Normally they, they read Harry. He can throw it all over the place if he's got time. He's kind of been up and down, but he's got the potential to go in there with an upset, but I don't think I don't see it happening. I think Houston... Uh, wins this one pretty easily. I will shout out for ECU though. They have a defensive lineman, Nate Harvey. He leads the nation with 13 tackles for losses. So, you know, that could be one thing too. You know, they might need him to tackle De'Ara King and the running backs and everybody in the backfield if they want a chance. But I don't, I don't see that happening too often. Uh, Virginia Tech Hokies taking on North Carolina Tar Heels. The Hokies coming off a loss uh, to Notre Dame. They had it close. They were only down by a point at halftime. Ryan Willis has been playing really well. In, he's subbing in at quarterback for Josh Jackson. Stephen Peoples done really well at uh, running back. Damon Hazleton, he tied the school record. He scored a touchdown in like five straight games. North Carolina hasn't been good. Like one game, they put 38 points up. Otherwise, they've been pretty bad. Virginia Tech, I think, bounces back in this one in, in uh wins. I haven't even been looking at my thing. I don't know if I'm picking the right shit. But alright, next one, Louisiana Tech and UTSA. UTSA is 3-3, but they won a game last week, 20-3 after forcing like four turnovers. Um, to be fair, they are tied 7th national turnovers forced. Um, but I think Louisiana Tech, they're coming off a loss last week. They're top 40 national passing offense. Jamar Smith, he's a really good quarterback. Uh, I, I think Louisiana Tech should... Uh, should win probably, I mean, I'd say pretty easily. I I can see it being like a 31, uh, 17, you know, kind of kind of game. Like, you know, where they're not totally blowing them out, but they're not really sweating it too much. UCLA taking on California. Uh, UCLA has not won a game yet this year. Cal's coming off a, a loss, a tough loss to Arizona. Cal's defense... Uh, they're actually 19th in the country in pass defense. They're 4th in total defense. Uh, Brandon McElwain at quarterback. He's okay passing. He's a really good runner, but he's been subpar passing. I'm actually calling for UCLA to, to win their first game this year. Right? Uh, they have a freshman at quarterback, um, Dorian Thompson-Robinson. But uh, he's actually been playing pretty well for, for a freshman. And given the situation, they're 0-5. Uh, they've been just playing good teams. Running back Josh Kelly, he's kind of coming on the last two games. He's run for over 100 yards in each of them, 125 and 124, the, the one before that. So I actually, I'm, I'm going with the, it'll be a little bit of an upset. I think UCLA went, actually wins. Uh, Wisconsin-Michigan, this is where game day will be. Wisconsin Badges going to Ann Arbor to play, to play face, whatever. They're doing a thing over there where they play football. Against the Michigan Wolverines, this will be. This has the potential to be like 13 to 10. 
But because both teams have really good running backs, both teams are great on defense. Uh, let me just break it down. Um, Wisconsin, they're number 12 in scoring defense. They're, they're number 4 in rushing offense, 26 in total offense, um, 12 in scoring defense. In Michigan, though, they're 29th in, in scoring offense, 42nd in rushing offense. But their defense, they're 10 in score D, 6 in rushing D, and they're number 1 in the nation in passing defense and total defense. They have basically overall the best defense in the nation. And they're facing Wisconsin. Jonathan Taylor, he ran for 221 yards last week. He's a Heisman candidate for sure. And this could be his game. If he can run for 150 to 200 yards against this, against this defense, I, I, I don't care how well Tua Tagovailoa is doing at Alabama or how uh, well Dwayne Haskins is doing. I'm, and I'm a huge fan of both of them. you you got to put Taylor up. If he goes for 150, 200 against defense, defense and they win, he... He's averaging, uh, he's actually leading the nation, averaging 100, about 170 rushing yards per game. He's third in rushing yards. He's fifth in touchdown runs. Um, and, it, and he's not necessarily all they have. It's, it's Wisconsin. That's, that's usually what they have. Alex Hornerbrook's been playing pretty decently at, uh, at quarterback, but, and he can make some plays, but he's sort of, they, you know, <clears throat> at Wisconsin, they just hand it to running backs. They've done that for the last 20 years, and it's worked amazingly for them. Uh, Michigan, they do have a really good running back, too. Karan Higdon, he's 20th nationally in rushing yards. So he's, you know, they're facing a good Wisconsin defense, too, to see if he can do it. To me, the difference in this could be Shea Patterson. He's the quarterback for Michigan. He has not been great, but he can make magic, man. He can he can do things. He can scram a little bit. He can he he, he might need to make a, a really big play like where he's about to get sacked and he gets out of there and throws a first down or a touchdown or, or whatever. He could be the, the difference in the game. I'm actually I'm picking Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin will win. Uh, but this could come down, um, 13 to 10, I was kind of joking. I can see it being like, I can't see Michigan giving up a lot more. Like, it'll be 20 to 17, 21 to 18, 23 to 20, maybe. I can't see Michigan, I can't really see either team giving up much more than like 23 in this game. Um, unless there's a defensive touchdown so, somewhere in there. Uh, this, this would be great though. But I, I think Wisconsin ends up coming out with that. All right, next game, Ole Miss taking on Arkansas. Arkansas kind of sucks. I literally, like, I don't know if you guys can see this right here, but I wrote stuff down for each team, and you see Arkansas right there. There's nothing. <laughs> I can't. I can't find anything decent about. They've been terrible this year. Ole Miss, their 16th in passing scoring offense, fifth in passing offense, seventh in total offense. Quarterback Jordan Tom is fifth in passing yards, tied tied for tenth in passing touchdowns with 13. Running back Scotty Phillips, he's, he's 11th nationally in rushing yards, tied for 5th nationally with 8 rushing touchdowns. They have the trio of probably first round picks in DeMarcus Laws, DK Metcalf, and AJ Brown at wide receiver. AJ Brown, he's 7th nationally with 44 catches, he's 9th nationally in, nationally in yards. DK Metcalf is actually 20th in yards. I don't see this being close, I think Ole Miss. They put up 70 points last week. They could have 70 points at halftime. I mean, it's kind of a joke, but... Yeah, I, I don't think this is close. I think Ole Miss wins that one. All right, Middle Tennessee State taking on the Florida International Golden Panthers. Middle Tennessee is Brent Stockstill. He's one of the best quarterbacks to ever play at Middle Tennessee. I think he's their all-time career passing leader. He just reached over 10,000 career passing yards, which puts him, like, in the 20... He's only the 24th quarterback in NCAA history to do that. Uh, they have a, uh, you know, they they got a pretty decent offense. They're 45th nationally in passing offense, but they can crank it up. I, I picked Middle Tennessee State to win before I dove into Florida International because I knew Florida International would be pretty good, but they're the top top 30 in scoring offense. Quarterback James Morgan, Morgan he's tied for 11th nationally in passing touchdowns with 12. Um, I was looking into it, and their their offense is pretty. I. I picked the middle season Tennessee State. This could go either way. Brent Stocks, though, you, you can't count him out. I kind of want to change it. 
Uh, I'm going to say I hope Florida International wins. Um, and now that I'm saying I think they probably will. But I picked Middle Tennessee State, so whatever. Shame on me. Hawaii Rainbow Warriors going to BYU. This will be good. Uh, Hawaii's in an interesting position. Their, their quarterback, Cole McDonald, he's actually hurt right now. He's uh, second nationally, though, in passing yards and touchdown passes with 24. Um, he's basically day-to-day. -day. They haven't quite said what the, is really wrong with him. He could start uh, against BYU. Luckily, it's a night game. It starts at 10, 15 minutes at night eastern time it's in BYU so they're like two hours behind so it'll be like an 815 so it'll be a later game so he's got pretty much all day Saturday to rest up as well um, if he plays I, I picked Hawaii to win anyway if he doesn't the, I mean they have a freshman quarterback Shevin Cordero he he played okay they won last week 17-13 he had two touchdown passes he made a really critical touch uh, interception that was returned for a touchdown and was nearly the, the difference in the game. BYU hasn't done a whole lot, so that's why I think even even if Cole McDonald does not play for Hawaii, Hawaii could still win. They, they've done pretty well just overall. They, they have a really good team this year. They're 27th national scoring offense, 12th in passing, 33 in total. They have the best receiver in the country, John Arsu. I, 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 I touted him up because last year he got hurt like six games through when he was leading the nation in receiving yards uh, per game. He's number one in receptions this year at 55. He's number one with 12 touchdown passes or catches already, which is by kind of by far, quote unquote, number one because the number two guys all have eight. So nobody even has double digits in receiving touchdowns except for him. And he's second nationally with 801 yards already. And that's through seven, seven games. Hawaii of the thirteenth game. He he could, he should go fifteen to sixteen. Who knows if he have mon if he has monster games, he could hit hit that two thousand mark. But I, I kind of doubt that. But he's still gonna put up great numbers. Why do you see Cedric Bird too? He's fifth nationally in receiving receptions at forty seven, and tied for third nationally with seven touchdown catches. So he he'll probably get over a thousand eventually by the end of the year with this as long as Cole McDonald comes back as much as they pass it. One thing I can say about BYU, Tanner Mangum, he's a he's a pretty decent quarterback. He's been there for for four years. Squally Canada is a de decent uh running back, but I think Hawaii should win that one. Alright, one of the games of the day that I'm looking forward to uh, it's a late game, Colorado though going to USC. Colorado man, the third they're great this year. Like re they're five and oh they're 31st in scoring offense, 43rd rushing offense, 24th in passing offense, 18th in total offense, 21st in uh, scoring defense. Um, their quarterback, Steven Montez, he's tied for first and actually completing 75.2% of his passes. Oh, by the way, he's tied to a tag of a little at Alabama. He's just throwing it all over the place. Running back Trevon McMillian, he's a transfer from Virginia Tech. He's done great for them. He's Run for 528, and of the five games so far, he's had 400-yard rush games. Three, He's had over 100 yards rushing in, in the last three, and four of five have been over 100. And kind of, Colorado, everybody on there is surprised of the year. Like, I knew Trevor McMillian would be pretty good. He was good at Virginia Tech. Uh, and Steven Montez showed last year he'd be good. But the next guy I'm going to say, you guys watch out, he's going to be up for the Bolitnikoff Award for a receiver. Uh, LaVisca Chanel, he's third nationally with 51 catches, third nationally with 708 receiving yards, fourth nationally with six touchdown receptions. He's actually number one in yards per game and receptions per game. He's averaging 10.2 receptions per game and averaging 141.6 yards per game. He, he, and he, oh, by the way, last week, they won 20-21 over Arizona State. He had all four touchdowns. He had, like, 13 catches for 120-something yards. He had two touchdown receptions, and they put him in at Wildcat, where he ran the ball in twice himself. So, he, the Conrad's look really good. USC, I tried to look up something for them, because you think, oh, USC, yeah, they got some guys. I mean, they got some guys, but they're not playing very well. JT Daniels at freshman hasn't done very well. Akasidric Ware, he's a running back. He's he's probably about it. Amon St. Ra, he's a freshman wide receiver for USC. He's done pretty well, but overall, like, if you see this here, I tried to look for some shit. And basically, I found out 
the USC, they're in the hundreds, yes, hundreds in scoring offense this year and rushing offense and whatever. So, I don't know. I picked Colorado. I think I did. Yeah, Colorado win that one. All right, the final two games. Wyoming Cowboys taking on the Fresno State team of the Bulldogs. Um, this should be Fresno State all over. They're 24th in scoring offense, 38th in passing, passing offense, 9th in scoring defense, 31st in rush defense, 34th in pass defense, 18th in total defense. Their quarterback, Marcus McMarion, he's actually 5th nationally at completing 72% of his passes. Uh, they have a Keyshawn Johnson, he's one, of, he's one of the best receivers in the Mountain West. Uh, I, I don't, Wyoming, their defense can be okay. Uh, the one thing I will give them is running back Nico Evans. He's actually 14th nationally in rushing yards. He's got 612 rushing yards. So maybe they can get it going, but Fresno State's defense is too good. But, you know, maybe uh, Wyoming almost beat a high-octane uh, passing offense in Hawaii last weekend. Granted, Hawaii was missing their quarterback, their starting quarterback. But uh, if Wyoming wants to win, they got to travel to Fresno. Um, if they want to win, make, that might be how. They keep it out of the offense's hands from Fresno. They pound it, play some solid defense, but I think Fresno State wins this. Boy State's coming off a heartbreaking loss. They lost to San Diego State last week. They played Nevada, a very, very dangerous team. Oh, Ty Gansey, the quarterback for Nevada, he's uh, injured. I'm not sure when or if he's going to be coming back. Even if he is, I think actually Boise State... They're coming off a big loss. I think they bounce back and, and win. Brent uh, Ripien, he's 15th nationally in passing yards. He tied for 10th with 12 touchdown passes. Boy State, they still can score. They've been the number one scoring offense in the country for the last 18 years. Combine if you if you combine them, they score more points than everybody in the country. Uh, they're 32nd in scoring offense, 11th in passing offense, 28th in total offense. They've always played really good defense. 32nd in D, 45th in rush D. 24th in uh, passing defense, 15th in total defense. Nevada likes to, and that's really good because Nevada likes to pass it around with or without Ty Gandhi. Uh They're a top 40 kind of offense. Wide, right wide receiver for Nevada, Caleb Fossum. He's sixth nationally with 45 receptions. Although he hasn't caught a touchdown pass, which is weird. They pass it, and he's basically their he's their leading receiver in terms of receptions. And yards, but none of them have gone for touchdowns. I guess he gets them down there, and then they like shovel it or whatever to running back. I'm not sure, but so that's my week seven previews, and it's all nice and broken down, and all the stats you could ever want. Uh, watch out for my stat attack. I'm gonna do some stuff. Watch out for my uh, other video. I'm gonna make do one called the F Files for the NFL teams, uh, where I'm just tossing out random trivia and, and stats and as we get closer to that the end of, closer later on in the NFL season when teams are getting closer to thousand or when players are getting closer to thousand yards rushing and receiving out I'll, I'll do that more. Uh, but my stat attack stuff will be coming up. I'm gonna record it right after this. So go to our Facebook page, please go to our you know our other videos here on the YouTube channel, like, subscribe, give me the views, share them. Uh, and I'll see you guys later. Peace.